So after having thoroughly tested the Ucolor M1 14 inch 2K mini LED monitor, I have to say I am very impressed. The first thing I noticed is obviously the screen quality. Now I have to say the colors are very accurate. The viewing angles are very good. Now in terms of pixel density, the Uperfect 14 inch at 2K is 215 PPI. A typical 4K 27 inch monitor is actually less. It's 163 PPI pixels per inch. And for example, let's say you take your MacBook Air, it's about 224. So it's on par with a MacBook Air. Now, despite this being powered by one USB-C cable, it doesn't have a dedicated power, although you can add it if you want, but I like the convenience of just one cable. I found this to go very, very bright. So you can see I'm increasing the brightness to 100 and you can see that it is more than bright. And I can decrease it all the way down and that's how dim it gets. Another thing I like about the display is that it is a matte display. So when you are in kind of bright rooms or you're in the sunlight, not only is it bright enough, I like the fact that it kind of diffracts the light so that it isn't shining in your face. And this was a problem with a lot of the MacBooks I've been using. This is a 100% sRGB monitor, which means that the color accuracy is quite accurate, especially for creative work. What I noticed is that when I'm using this for video editing, I found no issues with the colors. I, I felt like it was giving a proper representation of the what was actually being filmed. So this was really great for color grading. Now, this is also a great just general office productivity work, whether that be doing spreadsheets or if you are programming. Now, what I really like about this screen is that it's a 16 by 10 ratio, which means that it matches more of a traditional laptop screen ratio, meaning that the vertical height is a little bit taller than you would have for, let's say, your typical widescreen monitors that you have for dedicated monitors. And this is a huge godsend because this allows for more vertical text, which is crucial for things like programming. Another great thing I noticed about this monitor is that when I turn it on, it simply turns on very fast. Whereas some other monitors, they just take forever to turn on. You press the power button and you have to wait like 10 seconds for it to actually power up. This is very fast, almost like a laptop. Now, in terms of the speakers, unfortunately, they are a little bit quiet. I put it to the maximum sound and they're obviously not going to be the greatest speakers because there's no actual bass. But in a pinch, if you need to hear, let's say you're watching some video or you're doing some video editing, I did find the speakers to be quite good. The bezels of this 14 inch display are extremely small. It is ultra lightweight, which is makes it a really great travel companion. And I'm going to explain just in a few seconds why I think this is the ultimate monitor setup for on, when you're on the go because you don't necessarily want something too big, kind of clunky, adds a lot of weight to your, to your traveling kit. Now I have this 16 inch M4 Pro laptop and I honestly think that I never ever use it in a kind of a laptop situation and I don't really like using a laptop in general. I find that it, the keyboard and the trackpad, for me, it's just not a really good way to be productive. I much prefer to use a ergonomic split keyboard like the one I have here. By the way, I've done a review, it's called the Knock Free Light and I like to use a mouse with like say the special key bindings so that I can maneuver around windows much more quickly. So I never really was using this as a laptop, literally on my laptop or anything like that. And it was pretty much docked all the time. So I think it's a waste of money to have a battery, a dedicated screen, a keyboard, a mouse, all that stuff. When I'm 99% of the time going to just be using the Mac mini kind of just plopped on my desk. And if I do need to travel and go somewhere and work at an external location, remote location, well, I might as well bring this because I'm still going to bring my keyboard. I'm still going to bring my mouse and all the cables that come with that. And then I have to lug this. And what's crazy is that the combined weight of all these peripherals, including the cables. So this monitor, this 14 inch monitor, the Mac mini, the power cord, this specific lock free light keyboard and the mouse still weighs less than the 16 inch MacBook. And another benefit of this whole entire setup of this kit is when this Mac mini comes out of date, they release the M5, the M6, I can simply just replace the core computer, but I can keep all these other peripherals and that saves me a lot of money in the long run. I can just replace the CPU and the GPU and still keep this great hardware, the more ergonomic setup, especially if I set this up on a Visa stand and have it more in line with my eyesight, it's gonna be a better setup in a remote location if you're gonna be in that location. Let's say you're going on this 30 day trip but and you wanna have like a somewhat of a professional setup, well, this is going to be a lot better in the long run. And what's really cool about this is if you want to watch something on your phone, uh, for example, you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you can simply plug it with the USB-C cable and it will power the monitor. Yeah, that's right. A small little phone will power this little, this pretty big monitor. And if you're traveling and you want to, you know, have a big screen when you're on a long, long haul flight, 
Well, you can play your own personal stuff on this monitor and it's gonna be a really nice big screen experience. Now, I've gotta say the number one use case I have for this monitor is in my permanent home setup. Now, what I'd like to use this 14 inch monitor is to have more screen real estate when I'm in Adobe Premiere video editing. What I tend to have is a dedicated 27 inch 4K monitor and I just pre pre much prefer to use one monitor. I don't like these setups where you have these ultra wide wide screens or model multiple monitors. It's just too clunky. You have too many things. If you wanna move around, you have to unplug and replug all that stuff. I much prefer to have one monitor. Now, there are some cases where in Adobe Premiere, I'm editing with multiple timelines and the actual playback, like what I can see on the timeline is very, very small. So what I can do is simply plug this in into the Mac mini or, whatever, or your PC with one USB-C cable, and then I can move the, the program monitor onto that dedicated space. So I get this huge live view of my timeline playback and I have a lot more screen real estate just for managing all the timelines so I can layer B-roll on top of A-roll, for example. Now, this fits into the theme of having a dedicated niche device for something that you only need it for once in a, once in a while. I don't really need multiple monitors. I just need this one use case because when I'm programming or doing other productivity tasks, I much rather be single task focused as opposed to having multiple screens. I always find it comical when people have Spotify on one dedicated screen and then Slack on another dedicated screen and they're trying to program and they just completely just get distracted from both sides. And because my space is so small, the actual room, my home is extremely small. I have a very small desk. I don't have dedicated space even for a second dedicated monitor. So I love being able to take this out whenever I need it. When I'm, pro when I'm video editing, I can simply plug it in and I have a second monitor for a specific use case. Now I've been fooled in the past to use tablets as a secondary monitor. What ends up happening is that they use a Wi-Fi connection. For example, the iPad or a Samsung Tab S8. I tried, to, I tried to use that Windows Extend feature and it didn't work very well. There are multiple reasons why. What first is the proprietary platform. If you're gonna be using an Android tablet, it's only compatible or mostly officially supported by Microsoft Windows, which sucks if you're on Mac and vice versa. But in any case, when I'm using it for video editing, which needs, which needs you know, real-time feedback, it is very laggy and slow, even on a fast, modern Wi-Fi 6E network. I much prefer to have a dedicated cable and none of this bull crap where you have to have software or you have all the syncing issues. You just plug it in and it works flawlessly out of the box. Now, I only have one or two cons with this monitor. Number one, as I mentioned before, I kind of do wish it was a little bit easier to move the stand up and down, but that can be mitigated. Mostly, you just have to be you know, a little bit patient with how you open it. And the second thing is, because this is so nice, thin, very impressively thin, I'm just, I'm in love with that fact, but I do wish it provided a hard shell case, and, or at least the option to buy a hard shell case. Now, yes, you can use like a neoprene case, but if I want to travel with this, I want something that is a little bit more kind of durable in case, you know, I put a lot of weight on it. Now, I do think this is a very robust. It feels very, you know, professional. It doesn't feel like kind of creaky or anything. Nothing bends or anything, but I would prefer if they offer a specially designed hard shell case, especially since it's so portable and it's probably meant to be traveled a lot with. So there you have it. That's my review of Uperfect's Ucolor M1 14-inch mini LED display. Overall, this is a great package. It serves a lot of purposes. The picture quality is absolutely amazing, and I'm just generally impressed with how small, thin, and lightweight it is. If you have a use case for this, I think you'll definitely love it. Thanks for watching. I'll leave a link in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.